So in this lecture, we are going to continue my little YouTube series on common mistakes beginners make when they do stock price prediction. Now, before we get on with this lecture, I want to explicitly welcome you to push back on what I'm saying. In fact, I invite all the pushback you can give. So if there's anything you disagree with or anything I've said which you think is incorrect, please say so either in the comments or by using the contact form on my website. Now, I've noticed that sometimes people post comments, but they don't show up in the comments on YouTube. I'm not sure if this is because you posted something and regretted it, or if YouTube thought it was spam and deleted it automatically. My suggestion is not to include any links in your comment, since YouTube and hence Google are obviously very aware of SEO and generally dislike when people post links in comments. If you didn't know, this is a common spamming technique in SEO of the black hat variety. Now, that being said, let's look at this comment, which was just made recently, but did not show up on YouTube, possibly due to the reasons I just mentioned. Basically, this is in response to a portion of my previous video in the series, where I mentioned that serious machine learning practitioners don't even talk about things like predicting stocks. For example, Jeffrey Hinton, Yan LeCun, Yashua Bengio, or really anyone involved in this field. Where you do typically see it is with blogs and marketer-made online courses, which should be a sign that this kind of stuff requires extra caution and vigilance. As an example, you won't see this type of content being taught by, say, MIT or Stanford, but you will in an online course that somehow manages to be 50 hours long while only teaching you about scikit-learn. Now, what this commenter did is they made a common logical fallacy, which is known as appeal to authority. They incorrectly believe that the way to debunk what I'm saying is to say, look, here are these published articles about stock price predictions using deep neural networks. Now, it's obvious that they didn't read any of these articles because they make the very same mistakes I mentioned. In fact, once you actually get into academia, you will start to realize that bad papers are published all the time. The first paper this commenter posted tries to predict prices, which is the common mistake I'll be discussing in this lecture. As a performance metric, they use the root mean squared error, which is a fine metric for time series, except that they didn't bother to compare it with the naive forecast, which is another mistake I'll mention elsewhere. As a tip for anyone who wants to disagree with me, and again, I welcome this, is to debunk the facts. For example, if I say using prices as inputs doesn't work because it means you'll have to extrapolate in the future and you think that's wrong, then show me a counterexample that demonstrates how it is wrong. Or if you think a paper directly contradicts what I've said, then the onus is on you to verify what the paper has stated by replicating their experiments. People often forget that this is science, and in science, replicability is the most important aspect of your work. Furthermore, make sure you actually read the paper so that you know it doesn't make any of the mistakes I've already mentioned. That would be the correct way to go about this. This is a quantitative field. If you want to show that someone is wrong, the correct way to do that is quantitatively, not by saying, here is some guy who disagrees, and he looks like he knows what he's doing. Now, before we continue on with this lecture, this is just a short reminder that I now have four VIP courses which have limited time and discount coupons. As of this video, the current discount coupons are set to expire in just one week. You can get the coupons by using the links in the description. Okay, so if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in time series analysis. This is my latest course, and in my opinion, the best one yet. It covers classic methods such as ETS and ARIMA, but also modern methods like machine learning and deep neural networks. Now, if you're interested in time series analysis, you're probably also interested in financial time series. In my financial engineering course, we not only cover financial time series, but also how to build an optimal portfolio and how to trade using algorithmic rules. If you tend to trade in the stock market using your emotions rather than science, this course is for you. And be honest with yourself about this. Now, it turns out that there is a whole field of study devoted to learning these algorithmic rules such that you can maximize your reward programmatically. This is the field of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning also happens to be very closely connected to control theory, which is sort of like a cousin to time series analysis. The final VIP course I want to mention is my PyTorch course. 
Now, I probably don't have to tell you this, but deep learning is the most important topic in data science nowadays. The preferred library used by most leading companies and research labs is PyTorch. TensorFlow used to be cool, but its popularity has decreased over the years. Okay, so again, these VIP coupons expire in less than one week. You can find the VIP links in the description. Now, importantly, if you watch this video too late, you may still have a chance to get the VIP coupons. So check the links in the description to see if there are any updates. Okay, so as promised, this lecture is all about why using prices as targets is a mistake. Note that this is different from the previous video where we discussed why using prices as inputs is a mistake. So this video is about outputs. Okay, so why would we not want to predict prices? This seems to be the opposite of what everyone else is doing. For example, people want to know whether or not Bitcoin will reach $100,000. Well, the way to think about this is actually quite simple. Just be selfish. By being selfish, you will understand the fact that you don't care about the price. You care about how much money you will make. And how much money will you make? Well, that is called the return on your investment. Hence, what we want to predict is not the price, but the return. Note that this nicely ties into time series analysis. In finance, we often work with log prices. It turns out that log returns are simply the first difference in log prices. Furthermore, log returns have this nice feature that they are much more stationary compared to prices, which means that they are much better candidates for building a time series model using ARIMA or LSTMs and so forth. In fact, when you use a RIMA, you'll find that this operation is essentially built in, and thus, using returns is also closely related to how time series models actually work. As a side note, if you study finance even further, you will learn that even stock returns are not quite stationary, since they exhibit volatility clustering. In this case, we can use techniques such as Garch to model how the variance will change in time. In fact, this is one of the few things about stock prices that we can predict well. If you're interested in this topic, note that it's covered in the VIP section of my course on time series analysis. So let's think about why predicting returns would be useful. In fact, it's helpful to think of the extreme case. Suppose that we could perfectly predict the direction of the daily return of some asset. That is, we don't even have to predict the amount just whether or not it will go up or down. In this case, you will never lose money. If you predict that the return will go up, then you go long, otherwise you go short. This will lead to a profit every single day because your return will always be positive, and thus you will never lose. Now, of course, in practice, predictions this accurate aren't possible, but this should help to illustrate why we care about the return and not the price. Let's now discuss why looking at the price is actually misleading. Many resources report the error on their price predictions, for example, using the mean squared error. Of course, this is not useful. If you have one stock whose price is around 10 cents and another stock whose price is around $100,000, then obviously the predictions for the first stock will have a smaller error. But this doesn't mean those predictions are good. What does matter is the value of the error relative to the naive benchmark. As you recall, the naive forecast is the optimal forecast when your data follows a random walk. And it turns out that this is actually very tough to beat. If the paper you're reading predicts prices but doesn't show these metrics, then this is as good as buying a parking spot when you don't have a car. Here's another reason why using the price is misleading. This is again related to returns. Suppose that my price predictions are actually very accurate with a small mean squared error. However, suppose that even with this small error, your predictions are always in the wrong direction. For example, suppose that today's price is $1,000 and it goes down to $999.99. Your prediction is that it will go up to $1,000.01. Well, that's a very small error, no matter how you measure it. However, if your predictions are always in the wrong direction, you will always be losing money. So in fact, it's possible to always lose money, even if your price prediction errors are small. Okay, so to conclude this video, the lesson is simple. Do not try to predict prices, but instead, try to predict returns. 
Just be selfish. You don't care about the price. You care about how much money you'll make. In fact, you don't even need to predict the return itself, but only its direction. And guys, just as a small reminder, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's free, and you'll get these videos in your feed whenever I make new content. I've noticed that a very high percentage of you are not yet subscribed, so I'd be very happy if you did. And if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button as well. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in class.